Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to our April Sugar CRM user group. Today we're going to be talking about data management and enrichment in Sugar. As always, if you have any questions throughout, please enter them into that Q&A box. Uh, please make sure that you're using your computer audio and that all your settings are working. You have your flash enabled and all that stuff. And um, I will be sending follow-up information to you tomorrow. So um, anything that you want to review, you will be able to do. As also as usual, our hosts today are Megan Sheehan, our sugar trainer and business analyst, and Justin Kielthau, our sugar practice manager. So I'm going to hand it off to them to get started. All right, today in our user group, we're going to be covering uh, first, a couple of review topics. We've done some similar topics about data management and data enrichment in some of our previous user groups. So we didn't want to beat a dead horse and cover the exact same thing again, but we do want to just quickly touch on those and make sure you're aware of some resources that are out there from some of our previous user groups that touch on this topic. And then we want to talk a little bit about Hint, DQ Global, AccuMail, and Neverbounce various services that are available to help you with your data management and enrichment needs. As always, we'll talk about new releases at the end as well as some upcoming events that we have. And as Janine said, if you've got any questions, feel free to shoot those our way throughout the presentation. So all the way back in September of 2017, we did a user group on data management. And like I said, we covered a lot of the basics back then, so I just want to just quickly recap what some of those topics were. And we've got a link to that user group in the resource, resource list section within the On24 webinar platform. So you should see that either on the side of your screen, or if you don't see it, look at the bottom for something that says resource list. Uh, that has links to a couple of different videos that we're going to reference, including this one. So one of the things we talked about in that previous user group is how you can import and export data. So getting data into and out of your Sugar CRM system. You can import data into Sugar from CSV files using the import wizard that's built into every single module. And you can export data out of Sugar into CSV files from list views as well as from reports. Um, one thing that is a minor change on that topic since we originally talked about it back in 2017 is that Sugar version 8.3 and higher now supports exporting data from any type of report, whereas previously it used to be rows and columns reports only. We also talked during that user group about different ways you can update data inside your CRM system. So as things change over time, you may need to change some of your categories or some of the other uh, data points in your system and just make some mass updates. You can do that through Sugar's mass update tool within the system. You can also do that through a process of exporting your data, modifying it in Excel, and then importing it back in through the import wizard. <clears throat> so depending on what you're trying to update and how much data you're updating, uh, you have a couple of options there to, to pick from. Sugar's also got a really nice duplicate merge function that we reviewed during that user group, where you can take up to five records at a time and merge them together keeping all of the history on all five of those records, any related records in the subpanels of all of those will be retained, um, as well as getting a side-by-side -side comparison on a field-by-field -field basis of the various data points on each of the records that you're merging so you can select which values to keep. We talked about using reports to identify data exceptions. This is one way that you can look for places where your data is incomplete or you have bad data inside the CRM system is through building reports to find that and monitoring those reports uh, on a regular basis. And then finally, we talked a little bit about managing team and user assignments. This is one of those areas where data frequently requires updating as your teams are organized differently, as people enter and leave your business. Uh, you, you have to regularly think about how that impacts your data and what reassigning records to the appropriate users. So if you're looking for more information on any of those topics, please do make sure to check out that video from our previous user group on all of those topics. Uh, again, you can find that in the resource list. I'm 
The next topic we've previously looked at is data governance. And data governance is putting rules in place to make sure the data in your CRM system stays at a quality level. Um, there's a number of different ways to do this and examples of this. Some examples that we've covered in the past are, and that we're even doing now, are checking that cases are correctly updated in a timely manner, checking for unreachable contacts or leads, and what do you do if you find those, checking for orphan records, and what do you do if you find those. For example, if you delete an account, it could orphan all of the related calls, meetings, tasks, and notes. And what do you want to do with those records? Leave them there hanging out in the system, or do you want to purge them? A lot of this can be done with Sugar BPM, the rebranded advanced workflows within Sugar. Sugar BPM can monitor for changes in Sugar and react to those changes either immediately or on a delayed timer. The other option we use a lot is Starfish ETL, which can scan all records in a module for specific criteria and then take action on the records that are found. And for more information on that, we have two user groups where we've looked into this, user group nine from September 2017 and the data management section of user group 12 from December 2018. And those links are found in your resources as well. Something else we've looked at in the past is TrustSphere, which is an analytical tool you can purchase and install in Sugar. We did a really cool demo of that in User Group 7 from May of 2017. You can go back and look at that if you want to see a demo. And what it does is it, it reads the metadata from your email server, whether that's Exchange or Gmail, and will see who's emailing who and when and build links to links between all of those records. And one of the really cool things it does is it will show you who people are not entering into Sugar. They had a study that said 70% of relationships are not entered into CRM. So that could all be very important data you want to get pulled into DRM. Now one other thing to be aware of is that Sugar recently purchased CollabSpot, which had kind of a similar technology, uh, but isn't released yet. So Sugar may be coming out with a similar technology in the near future. All right, so moving into some additional topics. Uh, hint is actually something we've talked about as well previously, but it's something that's changed quite a bit since we talked about this last. So I didn't go ahead and link to the old user groups that had old versions of Hint in them. Uh, for those who don't know, Hint is Sugar's data enrichment service. So this is something that's an additional subscription from Sugar. It's not something that's included with your Sugar subscription. However, it is a product that is created and sold by Sugar um, and embedded within the Sugar application. So it's very tightly integrated with Sugar. Uh, it really only exists in Sugar. And um, it's a really powerful tool. This is something Sugar spent a lot of energy developing and is continuing to spend a lot of energy developing. So within, I think it's been maybe two years at the most since Sugar initially introduced Hint, um, they've come out with a series of um, significant improvements over that time period. And this is something that we continue to see actively on their roadmap that they're continuing to make investments in this area. <clears throat> So there's a couple of core functions available within Hint. Um, and the first is, as a data enrichment service, Hint allows you to easily find and add missing data when you're creating or updating records. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on screen sharing here. Um, and when my screen comes up in just a second, you should be seeing Hint, or you should be seeing Sugar, I should say. And so there's a couple of different ways I might use this function of adding data, enriching my data within Sugar. One is that I may have existing records inside my system that might be out of date or missing information. And so I can pull up Hint when I'm viewing any record, either from the record view or from the preview button on a list view. And Hint is going to show me 
a variety of different information that Sugar is getting from various data sources about the business or the contacts that I'm viewing. In this case, I happen to be looking at technology advisors. So I can see there's a variety of different information that's here. And I can also see that some of those data points have a little cloud next to them. That tells me that that's data that I'm missing or I'm out of date on, on my sugar record. So I can click individual cloud icons to add just one single data point to my record, or I can click the one here in the header to go ahead and update all of that information and update the corresponding fields on this record and save that data inside of sugar. I can also use similar functionality when I'm adding accounts or adding contacts or adding leads into Sugar. So for example, let's say I wanted to add Justin to Technology Advisors here. Using Justin's name and his company and his email address and some combination thereof, which I can manage to spell here, right? There we go. <laughs> Hint is, again, going to go out and search all of those various data sources and be able to tell me a lot of different information about Justin. So you can see it's found things like his job title, a picture of him, um, some contact information, a phone number or two, as well as information, again, about technology advisors. If I show a little bit more, we can see things about Justin's education, some previous jobs that he's had, his Facebook, his Twitter, and all sorts of good, fun things that I can access about Justin. And again, I can click that little cloud icon to go ahead and add that data directly into Sugar. So there's a couple of reasons I really like this as a user. Um, one is that it's saving me time. So the information that's here is probably the same stuff that I could find if I switched over to Google and I typed Justin's name and email address into Google. I could probably, you know, spend some time clicking through links and finding a lot of that same information. But I have to switch to a different window. I have to do that typing into a second screen where I'm, instead of just putting his name into the system. Um, and then, even after I've found that information, if I want that information saved in Sugar, I've got to go back into Sugar and copy and paste all that in. And so it's both serving the need of keeping me inside of the CRM system, which people who are, you know, supporting my CRM needs uh, really like that I'm staying in the system that they want me working in, um, as well as making my life easier as a user. The other area of hint besides the just basic data information is the news functionality that's available. So as well as getting that basic company information, Sugar is also putting together a news feed, again, scrubbing the internet for various news sources and finding information or news that companies are being featured in. And so you can see, um, so we posted a new video on our YouTube channel. We announced a partnership with a company called Active PBX. Um, and any sort of company news is going to feed through here. So again, not that I couldn't go find that information by searching Google, but serving it to me directly inside of Sugar keeps me working in the system I'm already in and provides a valuable source of information to look at before, say, starting a phone call with somebody to just see if there's anything important that's new news about somebody or their business that I might want to bring up in a conversation. In the latest release, Sugar took this one step further, um, and I just set this up, so I'm not sure I'm actually going to get any data on here yet, but they've added a new dashlet, which you can put on existing dashboards or on a standalone dashboard like I have here. And with that dashlet, yeah, I've got no news yet, that's okay, you can set up alerts about different types of news for your accounts or a subset of your accounts. And you can set up what accounts you want to be notified by about. Is it all of your accounts, just your favorite accounts, or you can make your own groups through tag. Only show me alerts for accounts tagged within this specific category. You can set what categories of news you want to be alerted about. And you can also select a variety of different notification channels. So you can be notified in this dashlet when you open up Sugar, you're looking at your homepage or whichever dashboard you have it on. You can also get pop-up desktop notifications, depending on which browser you're using. I believe Firefox and Chrome support this currently, where um, it will actually do a pop-up on your computer. Even if you don't have Sugar open, it will go ahead and pop up 
an alert that there's a new story about one of your accounts. You can get instant emails, so as soon as a new story is found, it will shoot you an email letting you know that there's a new story and what the details of that are. Or if you want some email alerts, but maybe not, you know, a bunch, whole bunch every day, you can get a daily digest or a weekly digest of all of the news stories for your account. Cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, Sugar is continuing to innovate around Hint and add a lot of new features, and I think there is certainly more to come. And so this is something that if you have not already taken a good look at Hint, I would definitely check it out and um, see, you know, compare the price versus the features that are available and determine if the ROI is there to support purchasing that for your organization. Next on our list is a relatively new partnership that we've formed with a company called DQ Global. DQ Global is a company based out of the UK that offers duplicate detection software and services. And so with their software or through their services team, they will work with you to analyze your data and help you understand what it makes sense given your data to use to identify duplicates. So taking a look at your data as a whole and understanding you know, would the information that you have maybe using address is or is not a good data set to be looking at in terms of finding duplicates. Maybe using name, is or is, or is, or is not, that sort of thing. Um, they also have a pre-built library of name matches that they'll use when they're doing duplicate detection. So this is going to be things like Bob versus Rob versus Robert versus any other nickname for Bob that you could come up with. Um, knowing that those are all actually basically the same name and that someone who's, you know, Bob Smith versus Rob Smith, well, there's a decent chance that those might be the same person. And once they've kind of done that analysis, they can return back a ranked likelihood of the probability that two records in your system are actually duplicate records. And so you can get, you know, this is a 95% match, this is an 85% match, that sort of thing. And then you can really set the bar, given that information, on how close of a match are you looking for before you consider something to be a match and you want to merge it. So through this service, we can set up either a one-time data cleaning to just take your data that you have in Sugar today and go through and look for duplicates and find out how many duplicates you have and decide how you want to clean those up. We can also set up ongoing cleaning uh, through the connection of DQ Global and Starfish working together um, where we can, on a weekly or monthly basis, automatically scan your data and find any new duplicate records that have been created during that time period. We've got a customer who's running this on a weekly basis and they're finding, you know, 15 to 20 new duplicates every week. Yikes. We've got a large data set. <laughs> like, who's entering this information? <laughs> um, and then once those duplicates have been identified, we can push them into Sugar for you to review so that you can look at them and say, yes, these are duplicates, they should be merged. Um, or no, they're not duplicates, they shouldn't be merged. Or depending on how much space you have in the system, uh, you can also just have us automatically merge them. So we've built processes where we say, you know, look at X, Y, and Z to decide which record has better data. Um, use that as the primary record and go ahead and merge them. If one record is blank in a certain field and the other one's not, go ahead and take the value of the not blank and all that sort of good logic that you might want in place in terms of doing some automatic merging of data. AccuMail is another service that we've recently partnered with and AccuMail is focused on address information. And so if you are doing any mailed advertising or other mailers to your customers or your prospects, uh, you know it's really important to have good addresses. And also that addresses change pretty frequently. Um, businesses move, people move, and the addresses that you had six months ago may or may not be any good when you go to send out your next mailing six months later. So AccuMail um, is a product from a company called Datatech SmartSoft. 
and they partner with the post office to be able to provide address validation and standardization services and national change of address services. So the address validation and standardization service is comparing addresses that you have in your database versus known addresses from the post office. So the post office has a giant database of all of the actual real addresses in the United States, and it can compare your address versus that address. It does some fuzzy matching here as well, trying to find the right match, and it will update your addresses to the correct known post office standards, or it will return it and say, hey, we can't match this address to a known address, it'll flag it as undeliverable so you know not to waste money sending mail to that address. The National Change of Address Service uses the change of address filings that the post office receives. So when you move, you tell the post office, I'm moving from X address to Y address. The post office, again, puts those together into a giant database. Acumail has access to them to be able to go through and say, well, Megan used to live at this address, that's the address you've got on file for her in CRM system, but actually she filed a change of address to this other address and we can update that address inside your CRM to match the known new address for Megan. So again, you're getting that update information um, so that you've got the correct address on file. And so here again, with the combination of Acumail and Starfish, um, we can set this up to do ongoing data cleaning we can, we can do this just as a one-time process. Um, national change of address in particular is designed to really work as an ongoing process because you're theoretically supposed to do that every 90 days or so to make sure that you're keeping up with the address changes. If someone's moved three times in a year and you only have the address, you know, that was three addresses ago, it's going to be harder to keep that up to date to the current address than if you've done it regularly along the way. Um, and then we can take those corrections, those flags, those updates, and push them back into Sugar so that you've got the correct address data there. Never Bounce is another, another service that we are not partnered with. You can just go to their website. Uh, they have a very easy user interface. What you do is you upload lists of your contacts or leads and their email addresses, and it will check to see if they're valid. Now what I think is cool about this is they don't just check to make sure an email address has the at sign and a period in it uh, to make sure they're textually valid. It actually attempts to contact the mail server and confirm that the email address exists. So you can go there and plug in fake email addresses and it'll reply with good, not good, probably good, probably not good, depending on what the email server that's hosting that email address uh, returns. Some email server providers will not return a status code for an email address. Others will. Uh, you can upload lists and it'll do a free analysis to say what percent it estimates are good or bad and then you could pay them to clean that up and download the resulting list and use the Sugar's CSV import tool to upload that data back into Sugar. Uh, a customer actually did this and they found it useful and I've known someone else who did it with one of their lists and they were both seemed pretty happy with it so I thought I would mention it here. Okay, new releases and wrap up. The biggest new release of the last couple of months is obviously the spring 2019 or 9.0 release. This is a Sugar Cloud and on-premise release. And if you have forgotten or are unaware, Sugar has a new release cycle where they have quarterly releases that are available only in the Sugar On Demand cloud. And then they have yearly on-premise upgrades that roll up all of those changes uh, through the past year of those quarterly releases. So if you're up on-premise and upgrading from version 8 to version 9, you'll have all the new features from version 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, and 9.0 rolled into one big upgrade. A couple of the highlights when moving from 8.0 to 9.0 include quote improvements with a couple of new dashlets that make it really easy to add products to your quotes. 
a comment log field on cases that make it easy to log new comments to your case, emoji support, report improvements, uh, improved scheduling, exporting of new types, new grouped bar chart type, additional stock reports, and then there's been lots of advanced workflow improvements. And a couple of my favorite items are a lot of bug fixes and security fixes. So if you're on-premise and not on the most recent version of Sugar, you should upgrade soon. I'm just going to add to that, there's also been a ton of performance improvements between 8.0 and 9.0. Sugar published a blog post a few weeks ago citing some pretty impressive numbers in terms of their performance improvements that they've had over the last year. Um, so if you want to check that out, that's what's on Sugar Community. Uh, it was pretty popular for at least a while, so it's probably not too hard to find on there. Are you talking about the A3 out of now? Uh, if you're on demand and upgrading from 8.3 to 9.0, a couple of the new features just released in the last week or two are shared email accounts. So now internally here we have a support desk with support at techadv.com. We can all log into Sugar and all send from the support at techadv.com email address. Uh, you can now designate a reply to name and email address for your outgoing email accounts. Um, I mentioned that comment log on cases where now you can expand and collapse those. And then, of course, we've already mentioned that advanced workflow has been renamed to Sugar BPM. And they've added support for tagging, import and export improvements of your Sugar BPM workflows and enhanced operators for process termination. Uh, a couple of other new releases, Mobile SDK 6.4.1 back in March 15th. I believe they upgraded the version of Node.js, which probably doesn't mean anything to anyone other than a developer. <laughs> but it's always nice to keep up to date on the current versions of software. And then the Sugar Connector for Marketo and the Customer Journey plugins both had releases to prepare them for version 9.0. If you're using either of those things and you haven't upgraded them to the most recent version, you should probably do that before you upgrade to version 9.0. Uh, also, after our last user group, Sugar version 8.0.3 was released, which had 17 security patches. So that was a very important one. And then MS Word and Excel plugin updates that fixed an issue with LDAP or single sign-on. And then Word had fixed an issue with mail merging. All right, guys. So our next user group is going to be in June. Um, the registration link for that is also found in the resources uh, box on your on 24 platform and as Megan mentioned if you don't see it there if it's not open right now if you go down to the bottom there's something called widgets and it should be that green one with the little piece of paper and if you click that it'll open it up so um, feel free to register for that uh, we're gonna be talking about uh, mobile app uh, specifically you know what are some of the most valuable mobile functions? How can we maximize our use of the mobile app? Obviously, that's uh, you know we're in a mobile age. It's something a lot of people are doing, uh, especially sales reps who are always on the go. So uh, that's going to be a crucial topic to cover. And then, of course, our annual Chicago Sugar Workshop. This is our once a year super duper live event. Uh, related to sugar, if you aren't registered yet, the registration link is there for you. And you'll see at the bottom of the screen, I put the promo code, uh, which is a bunch of random letters, so sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, you can, like I said, I'll send, I'll send out a follow-up email to this, and I will include uh, that information a second time. But if you're unfamiliar with the Chicago Sugar Workshop, it's an event that we put on annually. Um, this year it's going to be from May 14th through the 16th, and it's basically participate as you see fit. May 14th is an opportunity for you to come into our offices and have one-on-one -on -one meetings with Justin or Megan or um, our other our customer success manager, Megan Dries, 
or our CEO, Sam, uh, basically anyone that you want to talk to about, you know, a project you're trying to do or a difficulty that you're facing or any topic that is important to you, uh, we reserve that day for you guys to come in and, and set aside that time for us to be with you. Um, the 15th is the workshop day. We do that at the Park Ridge Country Club, which is down the street from our offices. Uh, if you're familiar with O'Hare Airport, it's basically... 12 to 15 minutes from O'Hare Airport. So if you were flying in for this, you would simply get off the plane and then you could Uber or Lyft uh, over there and it'd be real easy. Uh, and that is going to be covering a lot of interesting topics. Um, so obviously it's our Chicago Sugar Workshop, so we cover a lot of sugar-related information. Um, we'll cover new sugar features. We'll go over um, the sugar roadmap. Where's the product going? That's going to be presented by a sugar representative, and they will tell us, you know, what's expected in the coming years, what sugar's been working on. Um, and then we're going to hear from one of our customers about some special customizations that they've done in their system and how that's working for them and why they perform those uh, customizations. And then aside from sugar, just kind of business and general business information, um, we're going to be talking about uh, relationship analytics. We're going to be talking about omni-channel communication. And um, if you don't know what omni-channel communication is, that's basically the idea that, uh, and you've probably all experienced it, you go on a website and you chat to customer service and then you receive an email about that chat and then someone calls you following up on that email. All those uh, different communication channels are not only connected, but they're connected in a way where that information and data between those channels is coming through um, so that that creates a more seamless customer experience. Um, so we're going to be talking about stuff like that. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, some interesting sugar add-ons and just a lot of, uh, we're just cramming in as much information as possible into that day and, as, and not just that, but as much fun uh, as we can. So we'll have a, a cocktail reception at the end of the day. We'll be serving breakfast and lunch. The Country Club has amazing breakfast burritos, so get there early. Um, and then the, the 16th is the last day of the event, and that's where we're going to be doing um, sugar training. Uh, if you've done training with us before, you know it, it, it can cost uh, a good amount. So that's your opportunity to come in and uh, learn some crucial sugar features with us, and I'll be releasing the full agenda and our training schedule uh, soon, but um, I just wanted to give you an idea of what to expect and just remind everyone uh, that this is the only time of year that we do this, and we would love to see your faces and get some one-on-one -on -one time with you guys and, and uh, interact with you and help you guys with anything that you need help with. So for more information, you can go to shyworkshop.com. And again, that's located, that information in the, in the console there on your resources. If you just click the link, it'll take you right there and um, give you all the options that you need. If there's any questions or um, if you need help with anything, please feel free to reach out to me at marketing at techadv.com, and I'll happily help you with that. So that's our user group for today, and I would like to thank Justin and Megan for putting together a wonderful... Justin, Justin likes to wave at the phone, which is both hilarious and concerning. So uh, he just waved goodbye to you. Um, he also waved hello, but I decided to ignore it. So we will um, we'll be back here uh, in mid-June. Otherwise, if you're coming to the Sugar Workshop, we'll see you in May. So have a wonderful rest of your week, guys, and uh, thank you for joining us.